Manchester United have received an official bid from Napoli for Scott McTominay and the Jadon Sancho to Juventus news starts to heat up. That's what we're going to discuss in today's video. Welcome to Man United Review. My name's Jamie. Before we get into it, smash a like on the video and let's jump straight on into it. So let's kick off with, um, I suppose the breaking news that came out last night was regarding Scott McTominay. So Fabrizio Romano said that Manchester United have received a £25 million proposal from Napoli for Scott McTominay, but still not enough to proceed. United always ask for a fee in excess of €30 million Euros to sell Scott McTominay. Then we also had Sky Sports come out saying that Napoli are offering around €25 million Euros for Scott McTominay, a loan with obligation to buy and a transfer are being discussed between both clubs. And we also had um, Alfredo Padula, who's been quite reliable in the past, saying that Antonio Conte keeps insisting for Mc, uh, McTominay deal to get done. And he is waiting for Napoli. A face-to-face -face meeting took place today and they discussed about bonuses of the deal. That was um, last night. And then we've also had um, Footy Insider, I would say, take this story with a pinch of salt, though, saying that Everton are considering a move to sign Scott McTominay from Man United before the 31st of August, which, as I mentioned, I would personally take that story from Footy Insider with a little bit of a pinch of salt. Um, so just to rewind and recap a little bit around Scott McTominay. So we know Fulham had a bid accepted for him, for, or we accepted a bid from Fulham for Scott McTominay for £25 million. Um, but McTominay himself did not want to go to Fulham. That's why that deal collapsed. And then Fulham have moved on and signed Sander Berg. According to reports, McTominay would be open to a move to Napoli, but they're offering just 20 million, well, just under 20 million pounds for him. Um, but you've got to remember that is their opening bid. Fulham offered around 15, if I remember rightly, and then they increased it to 20 and then 25. Um, so first offers are generally, generally low. So I would imagine that's just the starting point of the negotiations. Um, yeah, let me know what you think. Would, would you accept that bid? 20 million? It's, a, it's, a, it's just under 20 million pounds. It's around 18, 19 million pounds um, for Scott McTominay. So they've offered 25 million euros. Um, you know, that was the kind of figure, wasn't it? 25 to 30 million. Um, obviously, it's less than what Fulham were, were bidding. But, you know, if there's not that much interest, like if if McTominay didn't want to go to Fulham um, because he doesn't apparently doesn't want to stay, go to another Premier League club, apparently he would be interested in going to Napoli. So do we do we accept that bid? Like I said, I th it's the first bid. I'd imagine they'll come back in if it is rejected um, for maybe another one. Maybe we could get 20 with 5 million in add-ons. Um, you've got to remember with Scott McTominay, if we don't sell him this window, he's going to be out of contract next summer, right? Which means we either leave, um, lose him for free, which is not good, um, especially for a homegrown player because it is pure profit from a financial fair play standpoint. If you don't, then you can. He does have a plus one option still in his contract, which means if you do the plus one, according to the clauses in their con the player's contracts, that means that he might be entitled to half of the transfer fee next summer as well so you're just decrease devaluing scott mctominay he'll be 28 coming up 29 this time next year so for me i think we should just kind of see what we can get see if we can push napoli as far as we can and then if scott mctominay wants to go to napoli napoli i would be accepting that bid um so personally, I would take. I would. I, I would imagine there'll still be a little bit of extra negotiation. So I'd imagine that because it's their opening bid, twenty five million euros, there might be a bit of wiggle room with some add ons to maybe get it closer to that thirty million or closer to the twenty five million pound mark. You know, twenty million pounds plus five million add ons, for example. So um, there's definitely no smoke without fire, and they're credible sources as well. Obviously, Fabrizio Romano's been. Um, Fabrizio Romano is Fabrizio Romano. Sky Sports are fairly credible. Alfredo Padula has been a little. bit bit you know he, he was really accurate um last summer with the um, Rasmus Hoyland and Amrabat news um so and there's no smoke without fire so this is one that could I, I could see it happening um Napoli have just signed Lukaku from um Chelsea 
and there's still rumours that they want to sell Osman. If they get the Osman cast, then they'll have the money for McTominay. So I'm wondering whether they've got an offer for Osman um, and they're lining up some deals because most clubs don't just want to sell a player and then go to buy a player. They'll do it simultaneously because otherwise the, the selling club know that they've got extra cash so they can kind of increase their bargaining power. Um, so I'm wondering whether Osman, whether they've got a deal for Osman somewhere lined up and that's why they're getting in these players. But um, it's definitely one to keep an eye on. It is heating up. Um, let me know what you think. Would you would you um, sell Scott McTominay for the bid, that the, for the 25 million euros that Napoli have bid or would you hold out for a little bit more or would you keep him? Let me know in the comments below. Um, now, he's not the only player linked with an exit. So there's been a lot of noise recently regarding Jaden Sancho. So um, the latest on that is that Fabrizio Romano said Juventus are pushing for Jaden Sancho and are in contact with his camp and Manchester United. The big salary of Sancho is an issue. There's a shock. Um, but talks ongoing. Situation remains open as always. And then we've had um, Peter Hall, who I would say not the most credible Um you know, he's a hitty missy kind of journalist saying that Barcelona are also understood to be keeping an eye on the situation of Jaden Sancho. Chelsea have expressed a fleeting interest in Jaden Sancho, but nothing concrete, and they would have to move on some attackers, including Raheem Sterling, um, if they were to consider any move for Jaden Sancho. And then the Athletic have just come out saying that Manchester United would rather keep Sancho. Them let him then let him leave on loan without significant financial benefit. United will be looking for full coverage of his salary plus a loan fee and an obligation to sign him permanently. So they're the kind of parameters United are setting out regarding um, the Sancho situation. But again, this is one that's starting to starting to hear more and more stories, more and more um kind of credible outlets kind of saying that Juventus are interested. One of the reasons that could be is because obviously with Juventus' situation they're looking to move on Chiesa and then bring in another another winger or a replacement for Chiesa. Reports are that Barcelona might be getting closer to Chiesa. I read some rumors this morning saying that they've agreed personal terms with him and stuff. Again, I don't know I don't follow too much Barcelona news, but um, so he's seen as the player that they want to release in order to then create the squad space to bring in another winger, Jaden Sancho being one of those wingers. Issues obviously is wages, 250 grand a week. Um, you know, it's not like he's performed really outstandingly over the last few years to justify that sort of wage, is it? Um Chiesa, just out of curiosity, if you were interested, was on is on a hundred around 150 grand a week at Juventus. So it's not like, you know, he's on 200 grand a week. So so either way, there's gonna have to be some sort of compromise um with Sancho. They want around 40 million pounds, which I think they're unlikely to get the full asking price for Jaden Sancho. So it could be around 35 with some add-ons, possibly. Um, obviously, we've heard there from the Athletic, very credible source, saying that if the if they do loan him out, they want his full wages covering, uh, kind of a loan fee and an obligation to buy. That's the only way they're going to let Jaden Sancho leave on a loan. I think they're sick of paying him to play for other clubs, which is fair enough. Um, yeah, so two deals there potentially heating up. So you could be looking well the asking price uh, 40 for Sancho, um 30 for Scott McTominay. So it's 70 million 70 million pounds that United are wanting for both of those players. Um now that then if we were to sell them That'll be the money for Manuel Ugarte if the stories around United needing to sell to buy are true because we've had a lot of mixed messages from credible outlets on United's financial situation. So if it is a case of selling the buy, then that definitely gives us the funds if we sell both Sancho and McTominay to go for Manuel Ugarte. Or could we see some more movement towards the end of the transfer window? So if we have some funds available for Ugarte and then we sell both Sancho and McTominay, that could free up some extra funds to go back into the market late in the window. Um, or I could see a world where they kind of reserved that money because if you remember there was recent reports regarding the left back situation saying that United were were happy to wait until January to see what happens with the left back situation so could United keep some money in reserve under the assumption that we might need to go back into the market in January because if you remember 
the last few years, we've needed reinforcements in January because of injuries. We've never had money available because we've spent it all in the summer. Um, that's why we couldn't even extend Regulon's loan beyond January because, one, we didn't have the funds. But secondly, obviously, sure, and there was rumours that Malaysia might be coming back. Obviously, that didn't work out very well, did it? Um, and it's all... it's really annoying that we never had the cash available in January to go out and get deals because sometimes bringing in a player in January could make the difference towards the end of the season. So, um, But either way, we're going to know in the next week because the transfer window closes on Friday. I would imagine after the match today um, and obviously maybe over the weekend, we're going to start hearing a lot more news and a lot more stories as the week progresses naturally anyway, because obviously the more we get to the end of the transfer window, the more deals are going to be done, not just with United, but around as well. You might see movement on Osman that then might accelerate the Sandro deal. Um, PSG might want to go for Osman because they're heavily linked with him. They might want to generate the funds by selling new guy. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of kind of different, different, um, different kind of dominoes that might start happening this week. Um, I'll obviously keep you update, updated with everything, so make sure you subscribe. Um, let me know your thoughts on everything in the comments. I enjoy reading them. Smash a like on the video on your way out, and I will see you in the next one.